Hi everybody, I watched the video from uh, the Hot End channel about how to use advanced features of Simplified 3D and I have to say I liked it a lot. However, Simplify 3D is not the only software capable of doing such things that were um, presented there. So now I'm going to show you how to use open source tools that are readily available on the internet to do um, almost the same functionality with a bit less comfort. So first of all, I'm going to create a new file in OpenSCAD and I'm going to save it to where I stored my Terminator head and I'm gonna name it T800 as cat. Uh, as a first step I need to find out what is the name of the file that I downloaded. So let's take a look into the actual folder. I'm gonna select the name and copy it to the clipboard because I'm too lazy to retype it. So what I'm gonna do here is to import the model and hit preview. And as you can see it loaded, it's quite big, so we need to zoom out. So I'm gonna use the function view all. As you can see the model fills almost the whole print bed, it's from minus 100 millimeters to 100 millimeters. This is excellent for my printer as my print bed is approximately 230 millimeters. So I need to tell the slicing software that I want to modify the slicing uh, capabilities and the slicing output for this first part which is from the bottom of the model until the chin area then from the chin until the hairline area and then from the hairline area until the rest of the model. Well to do that I'm gonna create basically a modifiers which is a very nice feature in Slicer. We need to create a basic shapes that will tell that will cover all the portions of the model that needs to be sliced differently. So for the first part I need to create a shape that will cover the whole bottom part of the model until the chin. To do that I'm gonna for uh, the simplicity first of all create it in different color so I'm gonna change the color to let's say red and what I'm gonna create is to do a cube um, 200 by 200 Oops. And my first guess is that the chin is approximately at 20 millimeters, so I'm gonna do a cube of 20 millimeters. However, this is not what I wanted. As you can see, the cube is created at 0, 0, 0, which is the origin of the axis, and that's not what I wanted. What I wanted is to make it center, but even this is not exactly what I wanted because now all the axes are centered including the z-axis as you can see it's not at the bottom it's in the middle so what I'm gonna do is to shift the object a bit to translate it not by x or y but by z-axis by 10 millimeters so now when I hit refresh I can see that it shifted, the bottom part is exactly at the axis and I think I'm pretty close to the chest. Yeah, I would say so. So for me 20 millimeters will do. Now what I'm gonna do is to create another one, this time not red, this one time let's say green. And this time it's not gonna be 20 millimeters but let's say 80. But in order to place it correctly, I need to shift it by the 20 millimeters of the first cube. So there's going to be 20, but also by the half of its own size, which is another 40 millimeters. Okay, so let's try it. Oh, and I got lucky and I think I'm almost exactly where I want it to be. I won't bother with the precise measurement here. And I'm going to create a third cube. That's gonna be, let's say, 60 millimeters in height to cover the rest of the model. And to, I need to shift it by 20 and 
80 which is the size of the previous cubes 20 and 80 and also by height by half of its own size which is 30 so 60 divided by 2 and now I will show it great the whole model is covered this is exactly what I wanted now what we need to do is to export the modifiers one by one so I'm gonna comment out the original statue of Terminator's head and now I only want the first model to be exported so what I'm gonna do is to put an exclamation mark for them for the f for this part of the code and this means that uh, open asket will only render this line so I'm gonna hit render and as you can see all that is created is the bottom part of the cube and I'm gonna export it as STL and call it T800 modifier 1 okay now I'm gonna using using the same trick I'm gonna export the other cube so again let's see okay this is the part I'm gonna render it and export it but this time I'm gonna name it modifier number 2 okay and the same cheat I'm gonna use for the third cube yeah this is the one so render export STL and modifier number 3 although OpenSCA doesn't show it now within colors when it's rendered uh, it will export the STL including the color so I opened slicer and what I'm gonna do now is to add the original model so I'm gonna add the Terminator 800 I have a very slow and very cheap PC so all of the operations here will take ages I'm sorry I don't have 16 cores and 16 gigs RAM so it's gonna be a bit slower uh, the only thing I need to do is to right click on the model and select settings here you can load the modifier and this is exactly the functionality we need so we are going to load all three of our modifiers first of all I'm loading the first one and as you can see this is the smallest cube and you can see that it's placed correctly it's right under the chin from the bottom of the model so I'm gonna load the other modifier to modifier number two and as you can see again it's placed in a correct position and also shifted from the bottom so it's exactly what we need and this third one is optional but just for the sake of it I'm gonna show it to you as you can see it also stored the colors but it's useless because uh, slicer will show everything green when we exit this menu however what we want to achieve now is to change the parameters so first of all this bottom area should be uh, filled with very high infill percentage so, so we will select infill density and change it to let's say 50 and I also don't like the pattern that is honeycomb so I'm gonna change it for this section to rectilinear within the second part of the model I'm gonna change the fill density to something very low like 5% and I can change the pattern back to honeycomb for this part and let's see part number three I'm gonna change the fill density here again to 20% why not and fill pattern from honeycomb to rectilinear which is better for my printer and it also prints faster now this will change the infill percentages and the infill patterns but one of the things that was also changed within the demo was layer height and for this we can use a functionality here so what we will do is to tell the slicer that from 0 to 20 millimeters which is the height of the bottom box uh, the slicer should slice the model in 0 0.3 from 20 millimeters to 100 millimeters it should use the layer height of 0 0.2 and from 100 millimeters to the end of the model 
I'm gonna tell it to use 0 0.25 millimeters layer height so it's somewhere in the middle just for the sake of showing you that there is a difference okay so I'm gonna hit OK now my very slow PC is gonna calculate it don't worry what is shown as soon as I click somewhere else it will deselect the model and it's gonna show you the three modifiers within it so now I need to wait until it calculates the meshes and toolpaths required for the G-code export as I said unfortunately I don't have that fast PC so I'm gonna switch to preview and I'm just gonna use the favorite video trick to speed up the video Okay, now the model is rendered and I can see the layers. As you can see down it's very rough and it's very difficult to see it, but here the layer height is changed, but I'm gonna show you how it changed the infill. So here you can see this is the bottom part and within the bottom part I've set to use 50% infill using, using rectilinear and this is exactly what is here so you can see one layer is in this direction the other one is in this direction and it's very close next to each other so it's gonna be 50 percent infill now as we are moving to the chin area as you can see the infill changed to honeycomb and very very sparse so it's five percent here where we have the overhang slicer creates a bit stronger infill to make sure that the support structure for the next layer is sufficient and here we also have the smaller layer heights and this goes on until the hairline somewhere around here where again the infill as you can see is changed from honeycomb back to rectilinear very dense and also the layer height changes back to what we selected and that's the end of the model so now I can export the g-code and again this is gonna be slow on my PC because the whole g-code has around 28 megabytes as far as I remember for this model which is very difficult for my PC with single core and four gigabytes of RAM to handle but it's done now and I can start printing just for the purpose of verification I'm gonna show you how the model is processed by G-Code WS to show you how much filament it will use and what time does it need to print so now I'm in G-Code WS so I can load the g-code it's 26 megabytes as you can see so it's gonna take some time again to process okay so the g-code loaded as you can see the filament used is approximately 70 meters which is 174 grams and it says that printing time will be 8 hours 10 minutes and if we take a look on the 3D model you can see uh, the actual terminator head okay that's about it for this video so I hope you enjoyed and you learned how to use slicer for doing the advanced slicing including change of layer heights and change of infill percentage and type